Welcome to Daily Wisdom, Walking the Path with the Buddha, a podcast shared by David Roylance. This podcast is dedicated to guiding you to completely eliminate the discontent mind and the suffering it causes by attaining enlightenment. Learn and practice the teachings of Gotama Buddha that will guide you to fully attain a peaceful, calm, serene, and content mind with joy. To support this podcast, visit patreon.com forward slash support Buddha or visit buddhadailywisdom.com where you will discover a full range of courses, retreats, and online learning resources to assist you on the path to enlightenment. Now, here's our teacher to share more. Chapter 9 What is Gamma and how does it affect me? Gamma, or the natural law of Gamma, refers to the fact that everything in life has a cause and effect, or action and result. Essentially, our intentions, speech, and actions, good or bad, have an effect on us. One way to think of Gamma is that Gamma is the results of our own decisions or the effects of our own decisions. All of Gautama Buddha's teachings center on the importance of not doing any harm. By doing harm to other beings, we do harm to ourselves because of the natural law of gamma. If we put out wholesome intentions, speech, and actions, goodness will come back to us. With good, wholesome, and pure intentions, speech, actions, and livelihood, we know that our life will be good, wholesome, calm, steady, and peaceful as we eliminate more and more attachments on our pursuit to nibbana. Likewise, if our intentions, speech, actions, and livelihood are unwholesome, bad things will come back to us. If we harm other beings through our intentions, speech, actions, or livelihood, harm will return back to us. Gamma is not necessarily instantaneous or immediate. It may not come back in exactly the same form we put it out in. For example, if we put calm, steady, kind, and polite waves into the world's seas, that's what will come back to us. Maybe not immediately, but over time we will see this steady and calmness come back to us. Conversely, if we put out damaging and vicious waves into our world seas, then that is what will come back to us. Fierce, strong, and violent waters will create havoc and floods in our life. Gamma is not a system of rewards and punishments, but instead a natural law of cause and effect, or action and result. Gamma does not need to be feared. The natural law of Gamma needs to be understood so that we can make wise choices in our life that lead to a more peaceful mind and a more peaceful existence for us individually and all of humanity. There is no fear in these teachings and there is no fear in Gamma. The only one who fears Gamma is the person who does not understand the natural law of Gamma and is unable to make wise decisions that would lead to a more peaceful existence. The more you learn and practice the teachings of Gotama Buddha, the more awakened the mind will become to the natural law of Gamma and the better decisions one can make. This will result in a more peaceful existence to include a peaceful, calm, serene, and content mind with joy. Gotama Buddha's teachings are guiding you in understanding this natural law of Gamma to awaken the mind to better life choices that will lead to an improved existence. Each person has 100% ability to make decisions in their life. These are personal choices. Based on the personal choices we make, the resulting effect will be experienced. This is our gamma. The natural law of gamma is something that is talked about in modern society, but oftentimes as a joke or said in passing. Gamma is sometimes thought to be a mystical or mysterious concept. However, Gamma is the governing factor of all things in life through cause and effect, or action and result. Gamma is the result or effects of our own decisions. It is a natural law that exists, and Gautama Buddha's teachings are awakening the mind to deeply understand this natural law so that you can make good, wholesome decisions to function peacefully in life. Through understanding the natural law of Gamma, you will make much better decisions in life and thus, experience better results. There is no one that governs this natural law or oversees its functioning. The natural law of gamma just exists, and 
it is absolutely 100% truth. Examples of gamma are 1. You murder someone and then you are put into jail. Your quality of life is impacted by becoming worse. 2. You steal something and then you are put into jail and people steal from you. Your quality of life is impacted by becoming worse. 3. You commit sexual misconduct, having sexual contact with a person already involved in a relationship. This relationship is discovered and the partner finds you and a verbal and or physical attack transpires. Your quality of life is impacted by becoming worse. 4. You are someone who speaks with false truth through lying, gossip, and slander. People cannot trust your words and you find it difficult to have relationships, conduct business, and people constantly lie to you. Your quality of life is impacted by becoming worse. 5. You take substances becoming heedless and find yourself lacking concentration or mindfulness with the inability to focus on work, relationships, and everyday activities. Your quality of life is impacted by becoming worse. When our intention, speech, actions, and livelihood are pure without greed, hatred, or delusion, we are creating wholesome gamma for ourselves. Thus, goodness will come back to us. The Three Causes for the Origination of Gamma The following is a translation from the Pali Canon, the source of Gautama Buddha's teachings. Bhikkhus, there are these three causes for the origination of gamma. What three? Greed is the cause for the origination of gamma. Hatred is the cause for the origination of gamma. Delusion is the cause for the origination of gamma. Translation by Bhikkhu Bodhi in the year 2012. It is the goal of Gautama Buddha's teachings to eliminate the three poisons of greed, craving, hatred, anger, and delusion, ignorance, unknowing of true reality, realizing non-self and dissolving the ego to attain enlightenment and nibbana. This is the awakened mind that can be peaceful and coexist with others peacefully. Through eliminating these three poisons, one has eliminated all the unwholesome roots that create unwholesome gamma. Thus, nibbana will be attained. The more people who attain the mental state of nibbana, the more peaceful existence all of humanity will experience. Through everyone actively pursuing nibbana, the world will gradually become a more peaceful place to exist. Through the entire world practicing the following three teachings, the benefit and peace on earth will be immense. 1. Universal love of all beings. 2. Do no harm. And 3. Be a good moral person. Gamma is created individually. Each of us individually has our own gamma. Our individual gamma is returned to us on an individual level throughout our life or future lives if we are reborn due to not attaining nibbana in this life. One cannot run or hide from their gamma. It is important for you to maintain wholesome gamma individually and as a community or nation. As you create wholesome gamma, you should not wait or expect good things to come back immediately. You must create wholesome gamma without expectation of a return or when it will return. The expectation of return of something good just because you did something good negates the wholesome intention, speech, or action. You must have good intentions, speech, and actions because you know it is the right thing to do for yourself and the world. It is wholesome. You produce wholesome gamma because you know it's right not because you expect something back in return. One aspect of eliminating discontentedness of the mind is to eliminate your unwholesome gamma production through the elimination of greed, hatred, and delusion through practicing generosity, loving-kindness, and wisdom. This is done while doing no harm to other beings through practicing the Eightfold Path. We pollute the mind with unwholesome gamma every moment through our own thoughts and intentions. You must start there. With a wholesome mind that has no unwholesome gamma production, you will benefit from a peaceful and calm existence. All too often we attempt to stop or inhibit others from unwholesome intentions, speech, or actions, but if our mind is polluted, our message is confusing and not well received. 
With a pure mind, we have pure intentions, speech, and actions, so that our message to others is clear and better received. Thus, we have more ability to assist others when the mind is pure through learning and practicing these teachings. Additionally, it is the natural law of gamma that governs all things. While laws of society are defined and enforced by human beings, which means errors are introduced, the natural law of gamma is a natural law. It was not created and is not administered by humans. Thus, it is completely objective. This is the reason why we should not feel the overwhelming pressure or craving to right a perceived wrong, which would cause us undue stress, burden, and complications. But instead, we should feel comfortable that the natural law of gamma always exists and there is no need to overwhelm the mind with activities of righting a perceived wrong. The natural law of gamma is similar to that of the natural law of gravity. Gravity is experienced by all whether they are aware of the existence of gravity or not. Gravity is not monitored or maintained by any entity. Gravity just exists and all things are subjected to its forces. When you were a child, you did not understand the natural law of gravity and found it challenging to walk, run, jump, and exist peacefully in the world with the mind unawakened to this natural law. As the mind became more awakened to the natural law of gravity, you slowly began to function in the world with ease and smoothness. You found it easier to conduct daily tasks. Life became more straightforward and the world around you became easier to understand. The natural law of gamma functions in the same way. The more awakened the mind is to this natural law, you can exist in the world with more wisdom, ease, and smoothness to ensure you are making good, wholesome decisions that lead to good, wholesome results. Through learning and practicing the Eightfold Path, you can produce only wholesome gamma and thus extinguish all unwholesome gamma through producing only wholesome gamma. To attain Nibbana, a practitioner needs to extinguish all unwholesome gamma through producing only wholesome gamma for an extended period of time using the Eightfold Path as the way leading to the complete elimination of the discontent mind. There is no entity responsible for monitoring or maintaining gamma, and all are subjected to gamma whether one is aware that this natural law exists or not just like you were affected by the natural law of gravity, even though at a young age you were unaware of it. The more you understand the natural law of gamma, the more life will improve. One cannot run or hide from the natural law of gamma. All unwholesome gamma will need to be experienced and extinguished from this life in all prior lives through the pursuit of Nibbana. For you to escape the cycle of rebirth through attaining Nibbana, you must practice the Eightfold Path for an extended period of time which will extinguish all unwholesome gamma from this life and previous lives. As your practice becomes deeper and deeper, you will experience less and less negative events in your life. Life becomes more comfortable and easier when practicing these teachings through a more awakened mind with a deepened understanding of gamma. By practicing the Eightfold Path completely and entirely for an extended period of time, all unwholesome gamma production is ceased. You will eliminate the production of all unwholesome gamma and your life will become more comfortable, fluid, and easy because you are not creating harm in the world. You have burned off all your unwholesome gamma from this life and previous lives. Because you are not causing harm through a deep understanding and practice of the Eightfold Path, there is no harm being returned to you. You cannot escape the natural law of gamma. Your current existence is an accumulation of the gamma, your decisions, from this life and past lives. All your wholesome and unwholesome deeds have accumulated into your current existence. Our life is a result of our past decisions, good or bad, wholesome or unwholesome. To attain Nibbana, you will need to extinguish all unwholesome gamma from this life and all prior lives through practicing the Eightfold Path. Craving determines if there is rebirth, while gamma determines in what realm, what situation, and the condition of the new being upon rebirth. If there is craving, there is rebirth. Craving is the fuel or spark that causes rebirth, creating conditions in which a new existence emerges. 
Each existence is a new being. However, the craving and residual memories of previous existences are carried forward to the new being. Rebirth occurs when craving from an existence has not yet been extinguished. With craving being carried forward to create a new existence, the new being will create gamma in the new existence based on craving from previous lives that exist in the current life. These unextinguished cravings that exist in this current life will create gamma in the current life. All unwholesome gamma needs to be experienced in order for the new being to extinguish 100% of its unwholesome gamma. Through observing gamma as an indicator to extinguish craving, one can be guided to fully extinguish all unwholesome gamma. In this way, one cannot run or hide from their unwholesome gamma. Through extinguishing greed, craving, hatred, anger, and delusion, ignorance, unknowing of true reality, one will extinguish its unwholesome gamma to attain Nibbana. You may have bad situations and experiences happen to you in this life that are difficult for you to understand why they have occurred or are occurring. Gamma can be the very best and unbiased teacher that will help you to observe these changes that you need to make to improve your life through wholesome gamma production. You will only gain this insight if you have a deep understanding of gamma through learning and practicing Gautama Buddha's teachings. We actively apply effort to learn and practice these teachings so that we can extinguish any unwholesome gamma production. You will need to learn how to not attach or cling to the painful feelings, pleasant feelings, and feelings that are neither painful nor pleasant that you experience in this life while learning how to produce only wholesome gamma through learning and practicing the Eightfold Path. Laws of Society Now that you understand the natural law of gamma and how being a good moral person, practicing the Eightfold Path will produce only wholesome gamma, let's discuss laws of society that attempt to govern our daily lives but are difficult to create, implement, and enforce fairly. Following society's laws as they are written does not necessarily mean you will earn your own nibbana. Criminal and civil laws are created by humans. These laws are always imperfect. However, the natural law of gamma is not created by humans and just exists. It is completely fair based on the natural goodness or harms of one's intentions, speech, actions, or livelihood. We should all follow laws of society, but just merely following the law does not mean we are not causing harm to other beings, and following the law alone will not guarantee you will attain enlightenment. We practice the teachings, which are good moral teachings that far exceed any laws of any land. Freedom of speech laws are a perfect example. We have the legal right to say anything we want, mostly, in some countries. However, Hate speech, slander, gossip, or harsh language is not going to earn us nibbana. Wrong speech will harm others and thus create unwholesome gamma that will be returned. Society's laws are not always in line with these teachings, so therefore it's important to understand Gautama Buddha's teachings are provided so that we can create a better life for ourselves on this earth. We should adhere to the laws of the land, but we should allow the teachings of good moral conduct to guide our daily lives through good wholesome decisions. By practicing these teachings, we ensure that we have universal love for all beings, do no harm, and be a good moral person. Laws of the land do not necessarily ensure we are practicing these core teachings. The end of each chapter will have learning resources for further exploration. You will be able to explore videos, podcasts, quizzes, etc. to deepen your learning of the content you read in each chapter. Please see the ebook for more details on these resources. As you have questions or need clarification on these teachings, you are welcome to post those into the Facebook group Daily Wisdom, Walking the Path with the Buddha, or contact the author privately for in-depth learning. Daily Wisdom, Walking the Path with the Buddha facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash daily wisdom 999 thank you for listening to this podcast to provide support for this podcast visit patreon.com forward slash support buddha to access more teachings visit buddhadailywisdom.com 
There, you will discover a full range of courses, retreats, and online resources to assist you on the path to enlightenment. Remember to establish a daily, consistent meditation practice along with learning and practicing these teachings. A well-developed meditation practice is the foundation in which to train the mind to attain enlightenment.